Thank you. I believe that leadership is a journey, not a destination that we attain. And the details of our specific journey depends on where we are at today as a person and the direction we wish to go. Today, we're going to explore a little bit about how these journeys can unfold and evolve over time. Let's start in a familiar place. Many of us wish to maximize our time through planning. We create a picture of how our day, our week, our month will unfold. And this positions us for success, and it gives us some feeling of control in the chaos of the world. But surprises will come at us. We'll get the email, the phone call, a person will approach us with a problem, an opportunity, crises. We'll need to immediately adapt to the situation. A storm blows in, changing our world. Our beautiful picture has just been destroyed. However, I believe it is in these moments where leadership is developed. I know in my personal life, the greatest lessons I have learned are in times of stress. The way forward was unclear. There was no certain outcome that would be achieved. In these times, I believe the advice that we receive and give is appreciated the most and has the greatest potential to impact future behavior. How we handle ourselves, how we interact with the people involved, how we deal with the specifics of the situation will be watched and modeled by the members of our team. To perform as a leader means we need to be in control. We need to be in control of ourselves, our emotions, our responses, our way of thinking. Technically, we need to be able to dive into the heart of the issue. Where can we have the greatest impact? Behaviorally, we need to respond in a way that inspires and motivates others instead of something else. Ethically, we need to be able to make the right choices, even when it is difficult and the way forward is, is maybe unpopular. So in reality, we need to embrace these moments as the greatest opportunities to develop leadership in ourselves as well as our teams. How we, how we should really celebrate, but to maximize these opportunities, we need to be able to react coherently and positively to the situation. How we respond it needs to be prepared and practiced in advance the skills and techniques that we need to use, ready to be deployed at a moment's notice. In reality, the difficulty is preparing today for a future that is uncertain. I imagine a toolbox with our own personal tool set that travels with us wherever we go. These tools all may have their particular purpose, but we can improvise their use depending on the situation. Also, tools can be used in combination to have a greater effect, a multiplier effect. I like this visualization because I believe that all we have today are the skills and knowledge and expertise that we possess. These are represented as tools in our toolbox. And when we encounter a problem, all we can apply are the tools that we have today. We may not have the perfect tool, but it is our starting point the place that we will proceed. Over time, we will become uh, more aware of where our particular tool set is most effective and where we need to acquire or develop a new tool. Because of this, I would propose that great leaders have a huge, well-maintained tool set, and they are experts at acquiring new ones by continually investing in their own personal development. If we wish to become strong leaders, we need to focus on honing our own abilities and consciously develop ourselves. We need a plan for our own personal development. We are responsible for our own tool set. How complete and relevant it is will depend on how we have developed as a person. In the end, our toolbox is our toolbox. Who I am is who I am. So what does a tool look like? A tool that I use often I will call a thought framework. It's a method of breaking down complex, difficult situations in a way that can be better understood, better explained, more easily managed. Most of my life has been spent on small teams. 
As we encounter a new issue, we will explore it from multiple aspects, trying to better understand the extent and nature of what we're dealing with. And then we will create a course forward, a way that's better than what we have today. Over time, a new person would join us and we would ask them for their help. Hey, please help us achieve this goal. And this sounds so easy, but I can tell you today that all, that almost never works. There's an invisible barrier that's impossible to pass. It appears that the person is on board. They maybe trust us, they're willing to help. But as we encounter difficulties and uncertainties, they can easily create questions and disillusionment in the individual, sometimes negatively. People can get these alligator arms. Well, it's not my fault. I didn't create this mess. I did my job. Over time, though, I realized this was a natural reaction. These people had not taken the same journey as we had and had not developed appreciation for the original problem. I shouldn't have been starting with the goal. I should have been working to take them on the journey that we had as fast as possible. In the end, it turns out the fastest route is not a straight line. For an engineer like me, this is a killer. It's so hard to accept. <laughs> it seems so inefficient. But as we sit here today, I've learned to accept that. And as we encounter problems, I would tend to break them down into three to five high-level perspectives, each of which could have its own three to five points of view, and so on. Using this methodology, even complex problems can be broken into just a few levels. I have found this to be very effective. First of all, when I take a new person and we start to go around this circle, we create a learning conversation. They bring their own experiences and knowledge to bear, creating a deeper understanding of the core issue and often changing our end goal for the better. Also, it helps me deal with the emotions of the situation. As you might imagine, these conversations are not always smooth and easy. There are many factors that can significantly raise the emotional stakes. For myself, it allows me to step back and view the situation more objectively. They're not attacking me as a person, they're questioning the framework. What perspective is missing from this or poorly structured or not explained well? Also, as I work with others, I often find that two people appear to be strongly disagreeing. But as we try to uncover their feelings, it turns out that they're just at different points within this framework. If you can get them to move to the same perspective, their opinions are much more closely aligned than were originally evident. I use the framework to describe their opinions more objectively. It turns out nobody will move until they feel you've heard their story. And sometimes I'll move um, everybody to a third, more neutral perspective before we go forward. So these frameworks have been very pow powerful for me and have been very versatile. So many of the tools in my personal toolbox are frameworks that I've developed over time. However, I tend not to show them in this raw hierarchical format. I like these learning conversations. They're much more successful. Words, concepts, visualizations, responses, all interwoven into a joint learning experience. So what does one of these conversations look like? This is a conversation I developed early in my professional life related to today's topic. Back then, I was responsible for a young, growing team. I would often get questions like, I want more leadership abilities. I want to have greater opportunities. I aspire to be in management someday. As we would uncover these feelings, we would hear a lot of reasons behind their comments. And from that, I started to develop a framework and a learning conversation. So today, if somebody would approach me like that, I would tend to start the conversation with something like, wow, thanks for bringing this issue up. I appreciate you surfacing it. If I could, let me make a few comments based on conversations I've had with others to make sure I understand what you mean. I believe that all of us have an area of expertise. It could be engineering, sales, accounting, whatever our path has been. At some point, however, we wish to leverage this expertise by taking on greater challenges or opportunities. 
As we look at developing that leverage, I find it helpful to break it into three areas, leadership, supervision, and management. When I think of leadership, I think of, I imagine somebody having a positive impact on others. Through our expertise, we can often bring technical insight and assistance, but some people do this in a way that leaves a wake of negativity behind them. The people they interacted with feel frustrated and angry. Leaders, though, can bring this kind of support in a way that leaves people feeling positive about themselves and the situation as a whole. And experienced leaders can also paint vision and direction, a future that is more positive than where we are at today. As I think of supervision, I break it into delegation, development, and discipline. I have never met a natural delegator. All of us had to overcome feelings. Maybe it's I'm asking somebody else to shoulder our, my load, or possibly that I'm going to be held accountable for the work done by others. Most of the time, it's a combination of these and other feelings that we need to overcome to really be able to delegate effectively. Development is about experience. Our best lessons are learned through the activities we do on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't learn to swim by standing on the edge of the pool. At some point, you need to dive in. Developers understand the skills and talents and goals of the team and work to stretch them in the uh, positive direction. People who delegate and develop effectively are often called coaches or mentors. However, at some point, we often have to sit down with an individual and communicate a message that they don't want to hear. This is the critical difference between supervision and coaching. Good supervisors are able to communicate a message that's direct but empathetic. They may not relish conflict, but they don't avoid it either, so these situations don't simmer and stew. Finally, there's management. Management is about planning and problem solving. They're able to create a path to this vision of the future and break that down into pieces that can be delegated out. A good manager knows that their future doesn't unfold exactly as we had planned, and they're constantly monitoring our progress in the current realities of the situation, adapting as necessary. Sometimes this might mean minor adjustments. Other times it can mean a complete overhaul or scrapping of a project. These can be tough calls, and because of this, a manager needs to be able to surface their underlying thinking and the reasons for their decisions in understandable and compelling ways. Now, before we get into this, I want to make two more comments. The right side of this diagram is all about personal development, choosing to, to behave differently tomorrow than we did today. We need to change how we think or act and these can be very difficult to do. Just ask anybody who's ever tried to lose weight or quit smoking or break any other habit. Also, since we're gonna be dealing with people, we need to distinguish between passion and intensity. Passion is a positive, compelling, drawing emotion. Hey, come with me, wouldn't it be great if we go over there? In contrast, intensity is an angry, pushing, aggressive emotion. You need to move now or else. We can and should use passion generously, but we need to be very careful when and where we use intensity. It will achieve short-term results, but often at the expense of long-term agreement and cooperation. At this point, I would tend to ask a question. Hey, I just went over a lot of information. How did that grab you? Any areas that you're uncomfortable with or you'd like to explore more? And then I would be quiet. At some point, they will speak, and we will go deeper into their feelings and get a better understanding of where they sit. This has proven to be effective to me, for me, because it breaks the problem into th groups of three or so. It has a visualization that's easy to draw, whiteboard, napkin, wherever you might have at hand. And I developed it in collaboration with many others. It's well vetted. So let's review. We started with this idea that leadership develops in these unplanned events that interrupt our days. If we're gonna grow as leaders, we need to prepare so that we can perform well in these times, and we use this visualization of a toolbox. Our tools are our tools, and we need to work to constantly develop and 
the tools we have as well as acquire new ones. We looked at a basic tool, a thought framework, a system that allows us to break down complex situations into manageable pieces that can improve our common understanding as well as deal with the emotions of the situation. And finally, we looked at a simple conversation, a basic uh, leadership supervision and management with a simple visualization that's easy to draw. I thank you for the opportunity to speak with this group today, and I encourage all of you to continue to invest in your own personal development, growing your own toolbox. And I'm going to leave you with my favorite quote on leadership by Noel Tishy. While winning leaders must have strong ideas and solid values and the energy and edge to pursue them relentlessly, they must also be able to teach, to listen to others, and let them lead as well. This requires that they be strong and vulnerable at the same time. They must have strong beliefs, but they must hold them loosely. They must be strong enough to not fear vulnerability. They must be willing to take the risks of pursuing their firmly held beliefs, understanding that they will not always be on the mark and may sometimes fail. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.